So in this video, I have a very important update in a case that dealt with a major win against a statewide ban on the purchase and possession of so-called large capacity magazines. So we need to talk about what is now happening in this case. Also, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is My Patriot Supply. I'm not a doomsday prepper by any means. I'm not a prepper, but I do think it's very important to have supplies just in case something happens and kind of for the worst case scenarios. That includes farms, ammo, uh, water, and of course, emergency food. One of the companies that I've been using to get emergency food even before they were a sponsor was My Patriot Supply. My Patriot Supply has helped millions of Americans get ready for the worst case scenarios. So if you're interested, if you wanna get some food to just have a little bit of peace of mind, of course, I always recommend you go a little bit further, but you can check out My Patriot Supply by going to preparewitharmscholar.com and each kit provides you about 2000 calories a day and lasts up to 25 years in the storage containers that they have. So again, if you're interested, you can head on over, you get free shipping and just simply go to preparewitharmscholar.com and all the links will be down below if you're interested. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we're gonna be talking about a huge case and a huge win against a state's ban on magazines and then also their permit restrictions that they put in place. You may recall that recently a lower court judge, a state court in Oregon, struck down Oregon Measure 114 and permanently enjoining it from being implemented. The state of course did not like that and so they appealed up to the Oregon Court of Appeals. Now, the last time we talked about this specific lawsuit, we talked about how in that appeal process, the court there had issued expedited briefings and had wanted an expedited hearing in this case but then the state of Oregon made a little bit of a mistake. They did not file their brief by the appropriate deadline. And then in that video, we talked about how the plaintiffs in this case, the individual plaintiff, Arnold, and then also the Gun Owners of America and SAF, they filed for a central dismissal of this case. They wanted the entire appeals to be thrown out because the state of Oregon had missed their deadline. Now, what ended up happening is after that, the state of Oregon then did file their brief. But the plaintiffs in this case then also filed a motion to strike that brief, arguing that under their motion to dismiss and under the required deadlines, of course, the state of Oregon had not filed their brief by the required date. But we have some news in this case that the court has denied the motion to dismiss, so they're not going to throw the appeal out. They let the state of Oregon miss that deadline. They let them file their brief. And now the brief has been filed in the appeals. And so that's going to move forward. But now we have the state of Oregon's brief, their opening brief, and all the arguments that they are presenting to the Court of Appeals on why the Court of Appeals in Oregon should reverse what the lower court said. Essentially, in what they want is the Court of Appeals here to uphold their ban on magazines and then also their farms purchase permit. Now, the case we're talking about here is the Arnold versus Kotec case. The Arnold case is a state lawsuit filed with the help of GOA and SAF. This case challenges Oregon Measure 114 as a violation of the Oregon state constitution. So this is a state lawsuit uh, dealing with the Oregon state constitution, not just a overarching second amendment challenge, you know, the federal challenge to the second amendment. This is more specific to the state aspect of things. Now under measure 114, it is generally required that if anyone wants to purchase a firearm, they will need to obtain a permit before they can acquire that item. To obtain the permit to purchase, the resident would need to complete a safety training course, go through a background check, get fingerprinted, pay a fee, and do all of that stuff. So there was a permit requirement that was put in place through Measure 114. Now, the second significant thing that the measure did is it created a ban on the sale, purchase, transfer, and possession of any magazines that hold more than 10 rounds after the effective date of that measure. Now, in response to that measure, the Arnold versus Kodak case was filed in a state court. Now, in the Arnold lawsuit, in that state lawsuit, the Harney County Circuit Court Judge, Judge Robert Roscio, issued an order originally. He granted a TRO and then later a preliminary injunction. And both of those effectively prevented Measure 114 from ever even going into effect. Then on review of the actual merits of the case, Judge Roscio issued a final decision in that case, striking down the entire measure, finding that it was invalid under the Oregon State Constitution. Now, in his order, Judge Roscio stated that this court is preventing the undue burden of ballot measure 114 from being opposed on current and prospective gun owners who have a right to lawfully possess firearms for the purpose of defending themselves and the state against imminent threats of harm. Judge Roscio ruled that Oregon measure 114 was in fact invalid 
under the state's constitution, and therefore he struck it down entirely with a permanent injunction. But like I said, of course, the state of Oregon did not like that, so they appealed. Oregon appealed that decision up to the State Court of Appeals, and then they also asked the Oregon State Court of Appeals to stay that permanent injunction, that they wanted a stay of that permanent injunction that Judge Rasha put in place, but then that was denied. But one of the other interesting things that happened at that same time period was the state of Oregon was asking for expedited hearings and briefings in this case, and the Oregon Court of Appeals granted that to the state of Oregon. And then some deadlines were set, some briefing schedules and some hearings were set, and the state of Oregon was set to actually file their opening brief by a due date of May 31st, but then they missed that deadline. And then there were, like I mentioned in the last video and in this video at the intro, there were some motions to dismiss that were filed, essentially saying that, hey, this case is done. The state of Oregon missed their deadline. They didn't file by the appropriate date. And therefore, court here, court of appeals, you should throw this case out. Now, ultimately, again, there was responses to that and some disputes about whether or not the state of Oregon actually missed that deadline or whether or not it should have been extended because the state of Oregon said that they called the court's uh, clerk's office and they got the okay that they did not have to file an extension, that they did not have to file by that deadline because there were some transcript issues with what Judge Rossio said at the lower court level. And I guess they were waiting on some transcripts or something like that. Now, ultimately, here what ended up happening is the Court of Appeals denied the motion to dismiss, and so the case is proceeding forward. And the state of Oregon was allowed to file their opening brief, and now we have their opening brief. Now, I'm going to break down quickly what is included in Oregon's opening brief, and it's a lot of things that are probably not super surprising to anybody who's followed other magazine ban cases, like all the ones we deal with here in the state of California. One of the first things they argue, of course, is that magazines are not arms, and therefore they're not protected under the Oregon state constitution. They put forward arguments that they're simply accessories. And one of the interesting things also with the nuance of this being a state challenge and dealing specifically with the Oregon state constitution is that Oregon here is arguing that the only type of arms that are protected under the Oregon state constitution are the type of arms that existed at the time that the constitution here in Oregon was ratified. So they're essentially arguing in their opening brief that Unless a firearm is so similar to an arm that existed at that time, it is therefore not protected. And they argue that these types of magazines that hold you know, this many rounds, that they're not protected. There's not some sort of analog to a type of item back then. And therefore, the state of Oregon could put whatever restrictions they want on these items. Now, of course, also we see a lot of the public interest arguments where they argue that these types of magazines are used in a lot of crimes. And therefore, it's in the public's best interest to restrict these items. Um, and then also one of the very interesting things that they bring out once again that we've seen in a lot of other lawsuits that have been rejected multiple times is this weird argument that they like to make that we are not banning all magazines. You know, the plaintiffs here are arguing that we are banning all magazines, but we're not banning all magazines. What the state of Oregon argues they're banning is simply any magazine that holds more than 10 rounds. The residents in Oregon will still have access to magazines that hold 10 rounds or less, and therefore that's good enough for issues like self-defense to protect you know, yourself. They are giving you permission to have 10 round magazines, and therefore it's not a categorical outright ban on magazines, and therefore it also does not violate the Oregon State Constitution. Like I said, this is an argument we've seen play out multiple times in states like California, and it's a similar argument that we also saw originally in the Heller case, where the District of Columbia was arguing that, hey, we are not banning you know, all firearms, we're just simply banning handguns. And therefore, since you have access to other types of firearms, we're not infringing on fundamental rights because you can use something like a rifle or shotgun. We're just saying you can't use handguns. That's also what Oregon is saying here. They're just making it specifically in the context of magazines. So again, that's a quick overview of what the opening brief of Oregon is. This case is moving forward. It's still kind of on an expedited hearing and briefing schedule, I believe. And so we're gonna get some updates on you know, that actual timeline. But the motion to dismiss in this case was denied. Oregon was allowed to go beyond that date, file their opening brief, and now we're going to look forward to some responses from the plaintiffs. And we've already seen a bunch of amica briefs being filed in this lawsuit from Giffords, Everytown, and all those other organizations that are now supporting Oregon and their ban on magazines and also their permit to purchase. So again, quick breakdown of what just happened in Oregon. If you all have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I will try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video, and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm, and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, 
And don't forget, this nation was built by armed scholars, and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.